they go doing me now? I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. You can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd. So, like, real boss, like. I just feel yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Alright, so hey guys, so we got a new episode of Talk to the Town. Today we have a special guest, Najee Chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the people that don't know, let's familiarize the people about your catalog. You work with Sony Orchard. Yeah, yeah. Cigar Talk. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the VP of uh, Urban at Sony Orchard. Um, that's Sony's independent distribution. Um, I started this YouTube series called Cigar Talk. A mm -hmm. um, bunch of different guests, rap, athletes, fucking actors, everything. Just anybody moving culture. Um, and then just, you know, just hustling. Just all around hustling in this in this music game. All around hustling. So um, so was you working at so Sony when you started Cigar Talk or it came after? Nah, I actually, um, I started Cigar Talk first. Mm -hmm. The reason I actually even started it was, um, this was 2017, so I started mm -hmm. in like May 2017, something like that. And um, at the time, I wanted to get in the record label. Like, that was my goal. It was like, yo, I just know if I get in the record label, like, I can make shit shake. Like, mm -hmm. I, I. And um, I was putting out mad resumes, like, for, like, two years straight. I was sending resumes for every fucking job. Like, okay. the low, from the low to the highs, like, okay. everything. I was applying <laughs> for everything. And okay. it never worked. None of that shit worked. Like, nobody was calling me back, nothing. So I was like, damn, you know what? I, this was like when podcast first like started uh -huh. and I was just like, yo, you know, if I create something to where like these labels could see, you know, I'm from New York, I'm from Queens. Okay. So I've been outside for a little minute. You right. know, I knew people. I was like, damn, if these labels could see, like I know people, I can make shit shake. Like mm -hmm. I can make culture shake. Somebody gonna give me a call. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started this show, Cigar Talk, and I was yeah. like, you know, I'm gonna do that until they recognize me and it worked. And Cigar Talk, you sat down with like 50 Cent. Yeah. Oh, viral Nikki. one with Nikki. with Nikki. Oh, you yeah. did Queen Radio too. Yeah, the Queen Radio. Um, yep. the Quando Ronda one went crazy too. Yeah, and I think you recently did like some drill artists like Two Six. And yeah, Marshall facts, now. facts. I definitely got to show love to the town. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I got to like, show love to the town. Uh, so you know, getting a bunch of the to the drill guys. I had Suno on recently. Um, mm -hmm. Two Six AR. I did Two Two G's oh. when it was early. Um, yeah, like Chef G. Yeah. So like do you feel like um they're like letting the drill I don't want to say let them in a little bit more, but you know, just shedding more light to them or they looking or they're not really paying attention? What do you think on the industry side looking out? It's a it's kind of a weird thing <laughs> with the drill shit. Yeah, it's in a it's in a weird space just because um one is labels and the mentality of any business is just profitability, right? Like mm -hmm. people just care about money. At the end of the day, who gonna make the money? It don't right. matter what you're saying. It don't matter what none of this shit. If people fuck with it, it's gonna make us money. Mm -hmm. That's what people are on. But I think with the drill thing, it's a little difficult because the extent of drill is not just music. This is real life. Like right. anybody that's really succeeding in drill, you gotta be drilling. You gotta be <laughs> doing this type of shit that you're talking about. But you know, when you're doing street shit, street shit and business don't. Don't, don't mix well, don't you know what I mean? So it's in a weird space, I think, Drew. So do you think it's possible to be a drill artist and not do all the street shit? Or you think, like, we get tested so often, it just ends up happening anyway? I don't, I think it's impossible. I think the energy that, that you give off is the energy that's going to come back to you mm -hmm. in a way. So, you know what I mean? If you're talking greasy street shit, shoot them <laughs> up, bang, bang, somebody going to want to test you and see if that's real. And it's whack, though, because, you know, it's a gift and a curse because I – I like drill, right? Like, I mm -hmm. listen to it. I fuck with it. I like yeah. it. But in the same time, people dying, right? Like, right. people really, you know, real shit is happening behind this. Yeah. People getting locked up. Um, and not to say, like, people wasn't getting locked up before drill existed. You know yeah, what I mean? But, but it just makes it a little... It's like being amplified and then trying to find things. And how you feel about the whole rap lyrics being used in court now? I don't like that, man. Me neither. I don't like that shit. Because of freedom of speech. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like they don't do that to no other genre. Like, I ain't never heard... In, if you actually listen to some rock shit, they be saying wild shit too, right? Mm, but yeah. it, it just feel like it's more of an indictment on hip hop culture more so than than anything else. So, and I, I just don't get down with like you know a judge or a prosecutor. Y'all don't listen to rap. You don't know what's real versus what's right. a metaphor versus what a nigga just saying. You mm. how you know? You don't listen to this shit. You're not right. part of this culture. So I can't get down with that. I, you know I feel like that's freedom of speech. But at the same time, when I say that, be clear. If you in the streets and you active, you got to pay for that if niggas come for you. That's, you know, you know the rules. So I'm not saying it should be like, you know what I mean? But I just feel like, you know, it shouldn't just be using only rap lyrics. You got to have like real evidence to me. Yeah, I feel that way too. 
and like it's just it's just drills in a scarce place right now. People say like it's gonna end soon. People say like now's the time if you ain't on that. Or if a lot of people feel like they missed their mark too. Like what, what's your thoughts on that? I think it's gonna come to an end in the next few years, to be honest. And I say that because like I love this shit, right? Like be clear, I love it. But when I say that is, you gotta understand is from the standpoint of like one is New York City is different than any other city. Right. We the most police fucking state in this country, right? Like when we talk about police and people actually being there, mm -hmm. you can't. One is most of these kids is not able to do shows because the mayor and everything is stopping Stop y'all from doing shows. Right. So it's like, how can a genre grow if you can't perform, right? Like your your, your fans can't even come to see you. Right. And then two, all the popping artists, like I said, when you reaching a certain level and you're doing a drill shit, you seen what happened to Pop, Chef G in jail, um, Busy Banks in jail, like it's. This real life shit that's coming behind it. So it's like K Flock in jail, right? So it's like the people that come and emerge and you dope and you start winning. The, it's a catch 22 because the fans, like, they want to know you really doing shit to be like, all right, we fucking with you because we know this nigga on it. But if you own it, you know, the law gonna come with that. So that's why I just think it's, it's an unsustainable model, not necessarily the music specifically, mm -hmm. but like everything surrounding it just gonna make it tough to like, make the genre kind of grow i feel like but people say like in chicago i guess they got away with it in a sense maybe because it wasn't so policed as new york is yeah but in the same token a lot of artists come to new york get link up with all these drill kids and then just like just kind of be off it after yeah. a while and it's crazy i feel like if they had the chance to maybe go elsewhere maybe something could happen maybe like it's a wave but like you said i just think of chicago like even old black it was like Police was scared to go over there. They wasn't even going over there. But here, they be all in every project. Them yeah, niggas, they, is going, they, they won't get there. you. It's too many police here to get away with that type of shit. Yeah, they're definitely in everything, which is, yeah. They're definitely in everything. But um, so do you have, like, who's on your playlist? Who you listen to right now? Um, a lot of Kodak. I listen to Kodak. <laughs> What's my, the Kodak and King Cole's. I was a lot 23. Yeah, boy, that's my <laughs> shit. I'm fucking so, with Kodak heavy. So me and my friend Elle was talking, and she said that she feel like Kodak is now at like legendary status. What Facts. you think? Facts. That kid, if we talking about like modern rap, like the new wave, I feel like he done did everything. Like he, he got, to me, he got hood, hood classic albums. He got hits. His, he's talking real shit Like it's not just street shit Like he know how to put his bars together I think Kodak is the full package for the new wave He one of my favorite like new artists for real. Well I would say he not, he not like new But like younger artists I would say I was thinking like I wouldn't hear Kodak on a pop record I feel like he did mm. his thing with King Combs Feel me yeah. But I would want to hear him like an Ed Sheeran Do a Lipa Like one of those like people That's like gonna make it like that's hard. I mean, shit. He was on the Kendrick Real Lamar one. album, right? Yeah, you Kendrick, got the most. You got I mean, Kendrick, Kendrick the, the 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 conscious nigga reaching out to Kodak. Like that was yeah. crazy to me. I feel like I feel like Kodak is is like a brand now. I feel like I feel like he kind of like he done built himself up so crazy. Like, Fact. and then he just marketed himself really good too. And I feel like it be by accident, but on purpose at the same time. I agree with that because like <laughs> let's think about it. Let's let's keep it a stack. Super Gremlin, not a record that. That's like people would think is a hit record. record. That's that's what I'm saying. Record. That's like he just put that out and it just people it gravitated it to did, it. But yeah. that wasn't like a record that's like if you just hear this in the studio, you're going to be like, yo, this is a hit. That's not that type of record. But right. Kodak Yak just got it, man. I fuck yeah. with Yak a lot. So being, so being I guess, a and in the urban department, right? Mm -hmm. Do you find it like... You have to like kind of teach the artists kind of how to make these long lasting records or you feel like, what, what's your thoughts? It's a little bit of both. You know what I'm saying? I think um, I, I try to, with the artists, like I signed you for a reason. So I want right. you to do what you do. I, it, it ain't about like me telling you like, this ain't the 90s where it's like, yo, get in the studio and do this. And do that. <laughs> like this ain't that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in the same time, I think that there's certain insight that I could give in terms of like understanding what a hit record is and how hit records are made and what you could do to just mm -hmm. like tweak things. So for me and all the artists that I really, you know, I sign or I deal with or I work with, mm -hmm. um, it's really like, you know, I kind of let them create and then I just give like pointers like, yo, what okay. you think about this? Like maybe try this or say it like okay. this, but I really let my artists do them. That's the real reason I, I sign anybody just because I believe in what you're doing. All right, that's cool. So we're going to play a game yeah. called This or That. 
And it's kind of like just like, would you rather do this or would you rather do that? Mm-hmm. Are you feeling this or are you feeling that? Right. So, what's like, what's more of your vibe? I guess the music executive or the cigar talk host. Damn, that's hard. I ain't gonna lie. That's, that's like hard. Like on a day to day, you feel like you do both every day. You feel like I you literally do both every day. You know what? <laughs> I mean, I guess if, if I had to pick. I would probably say the music executive thing, but I just think we're in a space today where, like, Anything ain't no happen. rules. Yeah, yeah you can no do rules. what the fuck you want to do. Like, you if, could be a president next month. Yo, nah, Donald <laughs> Trump was the president. This <laughs> nigga was a reality show nigga. Like, this, you could do whatever you want to do today. So, nah, to me, I'm like, I, I like both, to be honest. Or, okay, cool. Okay, so what's more important to you, breaking the story or having the best story? Mm, I would say having the best story because, like, just... Like breaking it is cool, right? Mm-hmm. Like I like like it's dope to be first with some shit, but I feel like and this is just for me, I can't speak for anybody else, but mm-hmm. for me, how I feel like I've been able to really develop a lot of relationships with big artists and people fucking with me is just because they know I'm not like clout chasing, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of this stuff that happens when you're trying to be the first one, a lot of people just clout chasing because they just trying to be the first one. So it's like I don't even care if it's real, I don't care what it is, right. like I just gotta get my shit out. Right. But like I feel like I I've, I've been able to sort of build the trust with a lot of artists because it's like you know. I just want to tell your story the right way. Like, right. you know, don't matter about who first or whatever. Yeah, and you definitely be making the artist comfortable and all that. Like, it definitely be a vibe. And I feel like you get a lot of stories that they probably don't give other places. If that makes Facts. Sense. And to be clear, I'm the one that broke that Fabio May story with 50. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Gilly and Wallow. I see it going viral. Yeah. But but that was the first time niggas really heard about that was, was on my shit, though. Or, yeah, and they know the inside. You've been on that. So, um, so... You feel like, hmm, how can I say this? Um, what's more, well, I don't want to say most more important, but going viral or to inform people. Like, what's kind of the message at the end of the episode? Yeah. Damn, it's it's kind of both, right? Because, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, today, listen, be clear. Like, niggas, you know, we trying to get the best content that people going to fuck with. So going viral is ill. Like, I like when I've been viral. Like, it's, it's a dope feeling. It's dope to see, like, a conversation you had with somebody, everybody talking about it. That's dope. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of fuck with the viral shit, but at the end of the day, like I said, wait, what was the other part? What was the second part? Um, to inform, like to inform yeah. the audience and stuff. It's a little bit of both, and I hate doing, you know, I know you say you got to pick, but it's kind of both because <laughs> for me, like I said, a lot of what I do when I talk to these artists is really to give insight so people that want to do this and really trying to, like, understand what it is, they could get gems from somebody who, like, did the shit already. Right. You know what I mean? So... Do you be like doing an interview and like getting gems too? Hell yeah! What? <laughs> Yo, I be so like shout out like a couple crazy. artists that gave you like a lot of gems. I know Fifty probably definitely did because I was talking for a minute. Man, Fifty for sure, and I'm from Queens, so that shit was that was just, that just legendary, legendary for me. Yeah, right? that meant that meant a lot to a nigga. Like that was, um, I I did Kev, I shot Kevin Gates today. Okay. And um, oh, after the whole Carisha please. After stuff? the Carisha please, yeah, yeah. I shot Kevin Gates, and uh, man, he gave a lot of gems though. Like he, he seems he like a deep very brother. Smart. Like he, he a different brother, but he deep though. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like I, when I say different, oh, he Aquarius. <laughs> when I say different, it's like he, he not really like a lot of people that I've met or come across. He, mm-hmm. He's his own person. Like there's nobody really like, like that. He's girl. like so entwined with. The world and nature, and literally, just like feel me, like literally, energy. He's big on energy, big. <laughs> so yeah. that was that's that's fire. That's fire. So like, okay, on the music executive tip, like, what's more important, image or talent? <laughs> that's a good one. That is a good one. Because you know, this is the day and age where one. marketing is key, right? Yeah. But yeah. we can't front like we see some viral trash records. Facts. <laughs> I mean, to to me, I still. I mean, both of them are very important, but to me, I would still say the talent just because, like you said, like you 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 can market your way to a viral moment, but you're not gonna be able to sustain it though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and to me, like I'm in the game, like everybody I signed, like you know, I signed a, a couple big artists. Mm-hmm. Anybody that I sign is really like I'm in this to really like move the culture and be here for a minute. I ain't, I ain't really just here to like sign a nigga that got like one hot record and then mm-hmm. next summer nobody don't give a fuck about you. I ain't really into that. Mm-hmm. So to me, I, I still think the talent, but again, be clear, talent to me is not just rapping good. Okay. It's more than it's more than that. Like talent, it's, it's niggas that I fuck with like, like Cardi B got a talent that she is herself. Like her personality yeah. is a talent. 
You know what I'm but saying? But don't you think that's the image also? That is an image also. But I, I think when you say image, it. it's like, it feel like it's like, all right, what do you do to make something presentable? But she's she just doing what she do. Like, I think regardless yeah. of if it was on or off camera, this yeah, is this is her. how she is. Like, this yeah. is her. Yeah, she's definitely authentic in that way. But yeah, yeah like, image could be like drawn up. It could be like, you could have to paint an image for artists or they could kind of come like already with that. So. Yeah. It's really like Cause pop yeah. image was was fire too, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like Definitely. you know, but um, that's a hard one. That's a hard one though. <laughs> nah, I know, cause like you know, being at the label, you have to like, of course, your goal is to sign artists, but you really want to sign some shit. So facts. then you got competition. Big then it's facts. like, I don't know. You you look you look like elsewhere outside of New York. I'm sure, right? To sign artists? Yeah, of course. I like yo to to me today like. We in the internet age, so it's I don't care about where you from because it's the right. internet. We yeah. we all we all looking at the same shit because of the internet. So yeah. it's like I don't really care where you from. Like if you dope and you got it, like let's let's work. Facts, facts, facts. Well, you kind of answered this one already, but with like, do you see like drill music for the next five years or a new sound arising? It's going. It's going to be a new sound. It's going. It has to be like I said. But what do you think? Mayor this? Adams ain't going to let niggas. He's not <laughs> going to let niggas rock. Yeah, okay. it's 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 bigger than us. This is like the the music is at a point where it's affecting like politics real and shit, like lives. the real life shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just don't see it being able to sustain. And that, but that's a good question. I don't. I don't know what's next. And I and I would love to hear that to me. And that's what I really want to look for. That's what I'm looking for out of New York. Like mm-hmm. for me, because you know I'm a little older. I'm 33. So I grew up in a time where, like, when New York was like lit, you know what I'm saying? Where it was dip set, like New York was it was it was a different type of energy. And not to say like, you know, there's definitely shit still shaking in the town. But my thing is like, who gonna make the sound that's? It's not just about what's winning now. Who gonna make the sound that's like worldwide? You know what I'm saying? Like you doing you, and people gonna fuck with it. But I feel like a lot of people doing drill because drills winning. Right, like right. drills the shit that's lit, which is cool if you want to do that. But I would love to hear New York artists that's just doing what they do. Like it ain't just because yeah. some shit is lit. Like this is just I felt like this, and I went in the studio <laughs> and I recorded and it. I and recorded this is how that. it sounded. So that's really what I'm looking for out of New York because I feel like in the last couple years, you know, what I'm saying like I feel like we got our identity a little bit. Like you know, Chicago played a big role in what our identity looks like right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even now, I'm starting to hear the the, the Jersey dubstep type of movement yeah, yeah, starting to happen. Yeah, yeah. So it's like we get ins- we borrowing shit from Jersey. And again, everybody borrows from everybody, but I just want to hear New York and the young niggas coming up like, awesome do shit. some new, yeah, do some, make some shit, make some new shit that niggas ain't doing. That's what I really want to <laughs> hear and what I'm trying to fuck with. I really like Capella, man. Like, I want to see how he continues to, what could he continue to do? But that first record, y'all know that summer. What was that, last summer? Yeah, that was definitely last summer. <sighs> that shit was insane. It was crazy as he's dropping, but I feel like it took so long. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like sometimes, like, yeah, you could push the record as much as you could, but fans want something new. It's a new rapper every fucking day. Right. So, like, we want to do shit now. You're right. <laughs> like, but that's my only thing, because that's what I like to tell artists, man, because it's like, I get it. Like, rap. Rap is a hustle now, right? To where it's right. like, nigga, I'm trying to get money, and I could get money like this, legal money. So yeah, but I get you can't it. go to work once every six months. Facts. That's a fact. <laughs> like, a fact. you got to be in there at least a Real couple shit. times a month. You right. want some check, like, right. you know? So right. just, like, I think artists should just, like, keep that in mind. Like, it's it's a new person every day trying to, like, you know, take your spot. Right. But, um, but I was going to say, like, if you had to predict what you think the new sound would be, do you think you know, or... Have you been hearing a little something? Because let's talk about it. Last Lap is kind of like the su- song of the summer right now. Last Lap. Last, last Burner. And, Glorilla. Yeah, that and Glorilla. Glorilla. I like that FNF, Glorilla. Yeah. Listen, I seen that shit the second day they put it on YouTube. <laughs> and I was like, it gave me the feeling like when I first seen Bobby. Okay. Because it was just like... Who the fuck is this ratchet ass girl outside <laughs> with her? But there was a pregnant girl in the video. They was just wilding out. And that's when I first seen Bobby. That was the energy I got. I'm just like, who the fuck is this nigga just dancing and, and just talking from crazy? Memphis. So like, nah, I, I fuck with Glow Really Shit Heavy. I, I, I really like that record. And I feel like niggas can fuck with that record too. It ain't just like a girl record. It's yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I hit out of the spot. I be like, <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, really? that shit hard. Yeah. Little I mean, I get what she's saying, fuck nigga free, right? But right. just the verses in the bar, I'm like, damn, this girl hard. You man. know, I love that because fuck a lot her. of guys feel like they can't get with female records. You feel me? That's, like, I feel that, but I, not, listen, man, I. I enjoy being able to see women enjoying themselves. Like mm-hmm. it's like it's a it's a feeling like a vibe when the girls are just like enjoying this. It's like damn, it's lit. Like look at all you girls in here. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm fuck New with York. that. Yeah, I fuck with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, facts. No, nah, yeah. but yeah, like I feel like you know guys be acting like I don't fuck with girls, but niggas be too tough for their own good sometimes. Niggas you is know? too. <sighs> all right, so <laughs> I get it, but like, so you think that's a New York thing or that's an everywhere thing? I mean, it's an everywhere thing, but New York is extra though. Like I be, a, I be around every, you know, what I mean, I be in around a lot of cities, a lot of towns, in New York, the energy just, you know, I think it's just extra. Like, <laughs> you know, what I'm I don't even know what to call that, but you know, what I mean, it's just extra. New like, York aura, I don't just, know. Yeah, that New York shit a little extra, but nah, okay. I fuck with the girl records though. Girl. Okay, that's lit. Um, all right, so would you rather, like, would you rather or? Be able to only sign artists forever, or would you rather be able to only sign producers forever? Mm, that's a good question. God I damn. I know. Thank that's you. That's a good Thank question. You. Damn. <laughs> you know what? I feel like the, uh, the it, probably the producer, yo, to keep it a, to wow. keep it a stack. Okay. Because if, if we really talking about what defines a sound, mm-hmm. it's more the producer than the, than the artist. Okay. Like if we talking about like when you hear, you know, you just we just mentioned Glorilla in Memphis. Memphis got a sound, yeah, right? Like Money know. Bag, Pooh Shiesty, um, Big, Big Thirty, Yo Gotti. Like it's a certain sound that come with that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Even back to the the old day, Juicy J and them was, you know, back you know. Even yeah. we talk about the South, Memf- you know, uh, uh, Manny Fresh had, you know, the Hot Boy, you know, the, Manny Fresh had his sound doing what he doing. Yeah. So it's like I, I really think the producers kind of really define the sound. So. I, I probably would have to take the take the production and then like you mm-hmm. know find artists to build over that. That was a dope question though. So um so like do you have like a favorite producer right now? Like who? You... My favorite producer. Or just right like now. some of some people like you could shout out like yo they've been doing anything this year. Um hmm, I would say probably. Damn, that's a good ass. Who been having a good run this year? We in our yeah, August. Who having, who having who a real good it? run this year? I have my thoughts, but I want to hear your. Let me thoughts see. Uh, it's weird because I'm not sure if it's like one person. Like it's a couple people. Like that's really you know. I feel like one is. Yeah, I mean, I think sure. I I like Hit Boy shit a lot because Hit Boy like. That nigga beats don't be sounding like nothing mm-hmm. I never heard. Like that nigga just be doing. Different shit. He do a lot of beats that people don't really know is his beats. Right. Like he do a lot of songs that I'm like, damn, you know, that's a hit boy. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I like hit boy shit a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I really like that Memphis sound a lot. Yeah. Um, I, don't really I don't know who you think. Right? What you what? Who reproduces? I've been hearing one? ATL Jacob a lot this mm, year. That's a good one. I mean, ATL Jacob, baby. I've been hearing yeah, him a lot this year. Like shout out to little baby because I hear every time baby get on one of them beats, man. You no, know, like I fuck with baby. I feel too, like baby. ATL Jacob's having a great year so far. I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. And then like, remember when I, how you feel about when Bobby went in the ring and he was like, um, <laughs> producers is taxing yeah. the high right now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nasty work though. I ain't gonna lie. It's nasty work. <laughs> It's nasty work, but I I I feel with Bobby coming. I mean, it's it's twofold, right? Because one is you don't want to short producers because that's a that's an important part of yeah. like we saying the ingredients to making a hit record. That's damn near, That's half the ingredients right, right that's there. That's the whole kitchen. Right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So <laughs> you gotta pay for that because niggas is really giving you the blueprint to make sure that you could you can make a hit. Yeah. But on the other side, the producer game kind of fucked up right now because niggas be doing loops. Right. So like I'm. I have to clear records, right? Like when I'm in Sony, I got artists, and it's like we gotta actually like clear these records, and mm-hmm. it's like you gotta get the publishing right from this producer, but then this guy made the loop, and then now you gotta go with him, and it's right. the shit just start getting mad complicated and and extra and money. Be and, like, Fuck it after you know what I'm saying. So um, I, f- I felt where Bobby was coming from, but I, producers producers definitely need to get their bag though. Yeah. So as ideally as a producer, like you want them to know, I guess everything. That's why I was like, I guess making the loops and doing the drums and all that stuff. Because a lot of producers are collabing. I know. I hate that, though. Do you feel like that's cheating? I don't want to say it's cheating. 
But I just hate like like I said from a clearance standpoint, that shit is annoying. Like yeah, and people annoying. been like saying like even the samples is like cheating right now. Would you you do you like the sample? Because I I feel like the Bronx came and started really going simple crazy Shasta, the last Cash couple Cobain years. And Shawnee Bin Laden, they kind of Shawnee Bin Laden that was whole, the one I feel like yeah yeah that's a they fact. started that whole sample thing. I mean, I, it was exciting at first to hear like how they was gonna flip records after a while, but like. People started going crazy sampling. I don't know. Yeah, now nah, they going crazy. But again, is I feel like niggas be sampling until they understand what it takes to actually clear a record, right? Because it's, it's one thing that like you could do the sample and just throw it on YouTube, which is cool. Mm-hmm. But if you want to actually get your bread, yeah, like real bread, right? You're publishing. You got to oh, clear that, and that's a that's this is a, a lot. Whole it's, nother, it's a lot. That's a whole. So I don't really be. I, Unless the sample fire, I'd be like, man, stay away from these fucking samples, please, man. <laughs> yes, and I feel like um, I feel like it's just like also a thing of being lazy too, because like, you know, like you said, people got to make the loops, they got to go get this, they got to go get that. So when you're just chopping up parts of a beat that's already done, it's yeah. kind of like the easy way out, you know. Nah, I feel that. I feel so that. I feel like they're kind of getting past with that, but yeah, samples is really like going crazy right now. Facts. So what are you working on at the moment? Man, I'm work I'm working on a lot of shit. Um I signed a few new artists that I'm super excited about. Um Wanna shout one out? Or yeah, I sh- I shout out uh a couple. One um his name's Fast Money Ant. Fast Money Ant from Chicago. Uh-huh. Um Man, this kid, he got it, man. He, mm-hmm. Yeah, listen, when y'all had, just just know that, you know, I said it on Talk of the Town, so when you start, you know what I'm saying, when you see it, just, you know, shout a nigga out, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, but nah, Fast Money Ain't Hard. Uh, um, yeah, there's a couple other ones I could I could really say, but, um, yeah. But he's the one that's, like, up there. Yeah. Okay, so you signed a couple artists. Cigar Talk is very much still happening. Mm-hmm. Um, Are you going to... Do more drill artists, or are you trying to like stare clear? How you feeling? Nah, I definitely want to do more drill artists, but it's like I, one is my my show is like I, I get I get niggas when it's like you you impacting the culture. You know right. what I'm saying? I ain't just trying to get people that like you know it's people that's like lit and moving, but like I really want to wait and and make it like yo when you come that's on my show, story, it's like you yeah. know what I'm saying we got a lot of shit to talk about because you because you really impacting the culture. Yeah. Um. So with that being said, it's like a lot of the niggas that's impacting the culture on drill is not here no more. Right. You know what I mean? Like I was supposed to interview K Flock. Um so the week before he got locked up, uh-huh. his cousin died. Um mm. so we had an interview scheduled. Um his cousin passed away. Okay. And um so we postponed it and then a week later he got locked up. So it's just like, you know, the drill shit is hard because it's yeah. like, you know, like same with, with pop. I was supposed to interview pop. Same shit. So it's Same shit. it just it just makes the drill shit really hard to like get people because like I said, I, I wait till it's till you having your moment, but not like when it's mainstream, but like yeah. right. I like to get them right before it's right about before. to blow. Like yeah. that's my that's my little that's my little right So yeah. do you feel like um running a platform is kind of hard to like keep that same like. I guess routine because you know artists people are seeing artists every day, yeah. nonstop. Right. So how do you like keep your like like the way you want it yeah it's it's tough i mean y'all do a great job man shout out talking to- all right so so yeah so i was saying like how do you um maintain like keeping the good content that you want to keep but still like getting hit with like probably labels hit you up artists hit you up to yeah. come up there and stuff nah, how, for you, sure. how you keep up with all of that I mean, it's tough. I, I definitely I, I want to shout y'all out talk of the town y'all, y'all do a great job on, on y'all page just Getting the content that people really want to see, so um, y'all know how to how to do the balance for real. Um, for me, one is I, you know, I own my shit. Everything I do, this is this is what I what I like or what I want to put out. You know what right. I mean? So it ain't really no pressure in terms of me telling people no. I tell people no a lot. I tell people okay. yes a lot too. But you know, I, I don't have a fear of telling people no. Okay, you know what I mean? So I tell certain people like, yo, it's, you know, it's, a little, it's too early. You know, let's do it later. Let's do it around your album. Um, so I tell labels and shit like that, but ultimately, like I said, is is I, I really strive to try to get people when I feel like you making noise, 
but you ain't blow yet. So you got a story to really tell, and it's kind of like before you hit the mainstream. Right. That's kind of that's how I try to. I like thought it. you worked with Complex too. Or are you just super cool with them? Nah, yeah, them the homies. I don't work with <laughs> Complex. I did a couple, you know, I, I did a couple content pieces with yeah, them over no, there, but um, nah, I don't work at Complex. Them the, them the homies over there though. Shout out, shout out Complex. Bro. Yeah. So um, so yeah, so well, we know you got the Kevin Ethan three coming soon now. Yeah. But um. They got the artist, Young Ant, on the way. Any yeah. last shout outs or any last things you want the people to know? Yeah, um, shout out to YKG Hot Boy, another artist out of Texas. Super dope, making making dope records. Um, Emmett Dupree, R and B artist, that's 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 fucking dope and fire. Um I will say so I, I got my own record label situation recently that I oh, yeah. that I locked in. Yeah, I got my own label um with Sony and um yeah, I'm about to turn up. Like we about to make a movie for real. You know what I mean? But I ain't a nigga like to keep talking. So I, but I, you know, I just wanted to mention it. But you know, you so you gonna see what's going. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot going on, a lot going on. So tell me where to find you. How can they tap in? How can they support? How can they show love? Man, so come holla at me, Najee Chill, N A J I Chill, man. All 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 social media, Najee Chill. Uh, that's my handle. DM me. I answer DMs. I ain't too cool to like answer <laughs> shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just just hit me up, tap in. Um, and I always look for new artists. Like I said, you don't never know. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little quick story real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so I signed this kid named Baby Keem. I don't know if y'all heard of him. Yeah, we heard of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we heard of him. Um he, you know, he uh He's on XXL. Yeah, he was on XXL cool. last year. Um, dope artist. Anyway, I say that to say, like, his friend sent me an email. This is like probably 2018. So he not nobody at this time. Like people don't really, you know, nobody knows him. He got thousand streams on SoundCloud. Um, and I was up fucking, I was smoking, I was rolling up, you know what I'm saying? It was like 4 a.m. I just rolled up. I'm just sitting here, I'm looking at my emails, and I get this email, and then, like I said, it's just it's nobody. But I listened to it and I was like, damn, this fucking kid just he got something like this shit. <laughs> ew. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I say that to say, like, yo. S- shoot your shot You know what I mean never You don't know. never know Shoot your shot And not just to me Like shoot your shot You don't never know What could happen in this industry Crazy shit has happened I've seen yeah. crazy shit So nah, I'm sure. shoot your shot As an artist Shoot your shot Even on an upcoming level I'll be seeing crazy shit happen So I already know Facts be happen. But yeah Shout out to Bel Air Shout out to Bel Air The <laughs> sponsor We got Black Bottles Holla at me I'm pulling up everybody's shit I opened it Before we started The shit exploded everywhere So my bad But shout out to Bel Air Shout out to Bel Air